provided hydraulic oil mm -hmm. for it to operate. Now that's unacceptable. And I must confess that sometimes um, in other parts of the country, coca operator don't show up, the sluice operator don't show up on time, the pump operators don't show then, up on then time. Then what do we do, Minister, and to deal better, with those things? Better supervision and management. And Only sometimes, sometimes the fuel for the, for the pumps are not utilized by the pumps, but, but they get depleted. <laughs> um, and I know that people don't drink them. So, so then uh, if mm -hmm. we know, if we know, just quickly, if we know what the problems are that, con that contribute significantly towards flooding or unnecessary flooding in several parts of the country, do you honestly believe that better supervision in instances where you, there are continued breaches and disrespect and, you know, negligence shown by staff is enough? Well, or do we I need to toughen better, up? When I say better supervision, that we know when these things are happening. But any sluice operator or pump operator that don't show up on time to do their work or that just absent themselves um, or that sometimes show up drunk mm -hmm. should be terminated. Um, there should be no excuse for these things. And, and so these are the things we are now trying to put in place. So on the one hand, we're trying to repair and maintain what we had. We are adding new pumps. We're adding new sluices, new relief channels. But all of that will only serve to improve if we also ensure that the people who are working in these structures are there working as they ought to. Now, quickly, Minister, compensation. I know this is a big topic. Uh, persons believe because the drainage and irrigation system has failed them time and time over in several parts of the country that they're entitled to go to the NDIA and say, look, you flooded all of my farms. This should have not happened had you had better systems. The ministry, Ram Sami, is responsible. And so we would like compensation either in the form of cash or stock or something. What is the ministry's policy once and for all? Because once the system fails the people, then the people suffer and they, they suffer huge losses. What will the Ramatar um, government and, and your, your ministry do to repeat? And, and again, I think that the Ramatar government, the PPPC government, yes. is making it quite clear that we are improving the drainage and irrigation system. I think we have culpability if, in fact, we had a system that is capable of handling the kind of rain that we have had, and then we didn't make it work. <laughs> the truth is that we have been building a system that annually is working at a higher level. And therefore, you know, that is where the government should focus its attention, to make sure that on a daily basis we are working towards improving the system so that it could respond to the climate change induced heavier amount of rain. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we have done. So there is no comparison between the DNI system that we have today and the DNI system that we had 10 years ago. And there is an even night and day difference between what we had in 1990 and what we have today. But we are dealing with different circumstances. Yes. The government of Guyana would like to see agriculture expand, which means we have to invest more money to expand and improve drainage and irrigation. We understand that there are times when, um, when farmers would suffer losses. And we understand also that there is an obligation on the part of our government, of any government, to provide support to the farmers in stressful times like when we have floods, which is exactly what we are doing. We have, over the years, supported the farmers to empolder their property. We have supported the farmers through provision of support like fertilizers, seedlings, etc. Is that enough? 
My, question, my answer as Minister of Agriculture is no. And I know President Ramutar as I knew President Jagdeo before. Their answer will be exactly that, that it is not enough. But I think we could decide as a country, and I put this out there, we could decide as a country that what we want to do every time we have flood is just compensate everybody and don't have the money to invest in making the permanent structural adjustment that will prevent such losses in the future. Well, well, many persons may argue differently. Of course, persons will be concerned about immediate relief as opposed to seeing a long-term solution or a long-term benefit. Well, that brings us to the part of our discussion where we may and want by to... By the way, I, if I were <laughs> a farmer, I might think the same. Right. Um, but, but I think we have to be strong in our approach, mm -hmm. and our approach as a government is whilst we will try to help the farmers, mm -hmm. our focus will be on building the permanent structural things that will reduce and hopefully eliminate mm. the, the floods. Well, th that is um, good, Minister, with respect to your position. Now let's throw the ECO to the situation room. Let's have a discussion now with some of the other persons, experts in the field and very familiar faces um, in the drainage and irrigation sector and at the Ministry of Agriculture. Now, one of the things, as Minister and I were discussing, is whether or not compensation... Some of them are farmers. Some of them are farmers as well. One of the things is whether or not compensation is enough and the long-term system. Now, let's look at um, what needs to be done now to correct the problems, to correct the, the garbage, dumping of the garbage, the, the systems that are not functional and so. Um, any of the, you that are with us in studio today, what recommendations or advice would you probably want to give to Guyana and Guyanese at present with respect to how they should treat or deal with the drainage irrigation system when it fails them or whenever they fail the system? Well, if we could uh, come in and uh, picking up for your ministers, uh, picking up for your ministers myself, so I think that uh, there is a program and the basic plan that is out there. And we will ask um, our farmers, we will ask our people to understand that some of these difficulties that they're facing are not entirely issues that the state government and the ministry about. The rainfall patterns have changed drastically. And as I've said before, take for instance in January 2012, the amount of rainfall that we had, that short period of time, would have caused a kind of flooding almost anywhere in the world. The important thing is that we were able to try to get out in the residential areas, you know, if it is possible. We would also want to encourage our farmers to join with us, participate with us, as we work out the plans, as we work out the, the, the activities that we will do. They know, because they have been progressive all along the way too. They've been making more demands for more lands. Mm -hmm. more agriculture, at least more services of drainage and irrigation. But we want to appeal to them, we want to talk to them, that we're not, you know, we're in this thing all together. And sometimes when they, when they are uh, disposed to seeing things through their eyes only and for their benefit, we as a government, we have to see it more on a national uh, scale. Mm -hmm. And we have to look out for all the other parts. But, you know, in just in backing up a little, the NI has come a long way over the last couple of years, and we've had to spend quite a lot of money in fixing those systems that were existing and building new, building new ones to cater for these issues of this new kind of weather patterns and so on. Mm -hmm. So we're going there, we're getting there, and sometimes the other things might come is that nowadays we have a different kind of dispensation with journalism <laughs> and the TV cameras and the journalists and they go into these areas and you know they can easily pick up a picture of a little flooded area and it comes out all over uh -huh. not like before but, but I would want to assume that that's a good thing that we have militant journalists who are going into communities and highlighting the plight of the people. Sometimes they do have an agenda of their own too. Uh -huh. But for us, if it works out to the benefit and the, mm. the benefit of the farmers and so on, that's fine. 
Okay. There, there, there are lots. There are lots of successes, lots of good stories about the system. In DNI and it's happened over okay. the past ten, mm. fifteen years. All right. That we are also poised right now for for some good and um, some good agriculture. Thank you very much for that comment. Now, Lionel, probably you'd want to tell us a little bit about um, what is being done from your organization's standpoint to make life easier for Guyanese. And I know the farmers have lots of issues with an NDIE and, you know, getting their work done, basically, and getting things in order. Thank you very much. Um, just to add what um, Minister said in his regards to the government, let's look at the practical uh, situation as, as outlined what the last recent flood. Uh, interestingly, you, you have mentioned that in 2005, the country has seen the worst flood, 2006, um, 2008, 9 of those years, is that we continue to build the infrastructure to better cope with the challenges of uh, increasingly high intensity rainfall. And as we build these structures, the important element of it is cost. The minister mentioned the system century to century will build to drain an inch and a half rainfall in 24 hours. The policy we have now, we no longer build any structure less than 2.2 as 2.25 uh, inches of rainfall in 24 hours. Okay. We can make that 4 inches, we can make that 5, 6 inches based on the return period. There's a cost to you. Okay. Take, for example, Mahaik and Mike, only being a very vulnerable area. As we have done in 2005 and, and uh, 2006, 10, 11, and recently, we discharge excess water from the uh, gates at Laman into the Mahaik and Mike home catchment. This time around, we have only used one. The tree gates the mm. Only one of the three gates, and we were able to manage the conservancy level with uh, similar quantities of rainfall. But if you check the, the of course there were downstream uh, damages to the crops and livestock, but the, 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 the prevalence of damages and the widespread damage went down. As we experienced years ago, mm. uh, it was not that much. But yes, they were damaged. Okay. okay. So that's a physical uh, situation that's, that, that shows that, and it takes time and it takes uh, uh, money to really build the system that we want. Okay, thank you. Minister, on a, on a quick note, uh, thank you very much for your comments. On a quick note, what is the role of Hydromet in terms of um, predicting weather well, outcomes? Let me talk about Hydromet. Uh, and those things, because I think everybody wants to know why when the Hydromet says that you will get rain, there is sun. Sometimes when they, pre they predict the weather fine and other times they're lousy at it, basically. Well, how, what role does that play in our drainage and irrigation strategy? Well, two things. Before mm. I get to Hydromet. Yes. Um, Lionel talked about Maduni and Lama, and only Maduni was open yes. this time. But there's another practical way of looking to answer your question before. Mm -hmm. See, in this last flood, we lost a total of 8,000 acres of rice across the country. About 6,000 of that was in the Maikoni area. Last flood being 2000. No, no, this January, January. Mm -hmm. um, February okay. flood out of 170,000 acres. If we didn't have the drainage structures that we now have, we would have lost more than half of the 170,000 acres. Blackbush polder, canal polder, along the West Demerara area, um, Mahaika, Maikoni, and so on. In Mahaika, we lost a little bit, but not much. Mm -hmm. In Blackbush Polder, I know there is a farmer from Blackbush Polder mm -hmm. here. He'll tell you that we didn't lose uh, any of the rice, or maybe very little. Mm -hmm. If you had the kind of rainfall that we had this January, we would have lost more than half of the 170,000 acres of rice. We did lose, but we only lost eight. Mm -hmm. For the farmers who did lose, it's not an only thing. They lost much. Yes. But when you look at the big picture, 
And that is the consequence of the investment we have made. So, so that is something to bear in mind. <laughs> Thank you. But you get to the hydromet. Let me tell you, if you are a weather forecaster in Guyana, in Barbados, in Trinidad, in New York, in London, <laughs> you have one of the most precarious job <laughs> because you said lousy yes. sometimes. <laughs> Well, these guys come in for real maligning on a daily basis. Okay. It's about prediction. Right. Prediction by its very nature is that you will not be correct all the time. The weatherman, or weather woman for that matter, in New York will do better than the one in Guyana because they have access to greater technology, more experience, and so on. Up to very recently, most of our people were not trained. Now they are being trained. For those who were trained, they didn't have access to modern technology. The Doppler system that we put up and that began to work last year um, is one of the new technology that is available. But they don't have all the technology. So we are getting there. And so even if we have all the technology, we won't be correct all the time. Okay. But if we have more technology, I guess we will do a better job. The fact of the matter also is that until, I said it this morning, until very recently, they, they, our culture was such that you know what weather was important for? For the cricketer who's thinking about whether we're going to have cricket tomorrow for the promoter who has a show coming up this weekend, for ordinary citizens who want to have a party, who have a wedding, they want to know what the weather is. But the weather is far more important than that. Weather is to help us in terms of aviation, planes, landing, and so on. The weather is for the farmer. In Guyana's context, the farmers probably are the ones that need the information the most. Okay. And so today we are preparing, very soon you will see a farmer-related forecast coming out. Because a farmer doesn't just want to know what, happened, what will happen tonight. Because he might sow his rice today and it will grow for several months. And at each stage, there will be different requirements for water. And so, you know, in the recent flood, and we were struggling to get water off the land. At the same time, we had farmers who were demanding water. water. Okay. <laughs> so the that's what Hydromet is all about, um, helping us to predict the forecast. And sometimes it's not easy because you know what? You said that the last couple of days we had brilliant weather, right? Uh -huh. Well, you know, Mr. Gadraj is here. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, there was 85 millimeter of rainfall in the Mycone area. Today, as we are speaking now, mm -hmm. 75 millimeter of rain. Let me tell you something. In the past, in the period we are talking about, 1990s, uh, 1980s, 1990s, 85 millimeter of rain would duck the place. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we ha we, what, what, what we have, we have one of the farmers with us here today, yes. and probably he can tell us as well, Minister, what are some of the concerns of farmers and persons who want to ensure that our drainage and irrigation structure is reliable and the weather information that Minister Ramsamy's weather personnel disseminate to the public is reliable. Um, can the farmer just, just share with us what are some of your, you know, problems that you face and what you'd probably like to see done to, um, you know, address this? And while, while you do Recently, that, mm -hmm. go ahead. You have a rehab process in East Black Bush Hole. Yakasari and Johanna, the DNI excavate 70 canals there. Secondary, secondary water course and drainage. And Nabi and Sons award contract there in the tune of $261 million. 
and they are working on the structure, sloughs, cokers, bridges, and check sluices as well too. And with all of this, we had some flooding in Yakasari and Johanna. I want to know what plans you have for those people, and also the 19 village too. Yeah. The, then you have said something that the, all of Ghana need to listen to. You mentioned all the drains and canals we clean, and you said over 70. What lots of Guyanese don't know is the thousands of canals and drains and so across the country, not just two or three or 12 or 20 or 200. It's thousands that must be kept clean um, and must be sometime be dug. But Blackbush Polder and Canal Polder are two interesting ones because you know, you know, um, I was a child when Blackbush Polder was commissioned okay. by Cherry Jardim. In fact, one of the places he stopped on his way to Blackbush was my parents' home. And I remember well because even then, you recall that there are four polders that. Les Beholden has its own main drain, and Maibikuri has its own main drain, and Yakasari has its own main drain, and all of these lead out to the Atlantic. But you know that the main drain from Joanna was never completed, so it goes and empty into the Yakasari main drain. When you take the water from Joanna and Yakasari, that must be drained off. It's too much for the Yakasari main drain going out to the 43 outfall. And therefore, what we, one of the things, yes, we have to clean those many hundreds of main secondary drains and so on, but we also have to keep the outfalls clean. We have to make sure that the sluices are operational. We have pumps operating at these places but we must complete the Northern Relief Channel at Joanna. We need to make sure that the Joanna water is not emptying into Yakasari, causing flooding in both Yakasari and Joanna. And that will take, we already have a contract that was signed to build a sluice out of the Atlantic to release water. And very shortly we will begin the construction of the channel itself. And th when that happens, we'll bring great relief to the Yakasari Joanna area. You notice in the recent rainfall, Les Beholden and my Bikuri were okay. They weren't flooded. And when you look next door at Joanna and Yakasari, how much flooding they had, one asks yourself, how was that possible? And that's because we need to complete that structure that was planned at the beginning of the Canal Polder project in the pit mm -hmm. The same thing at Canal Polder. So at the back of Canal Polder 2 and in Canal 1, we also have flooding. Because of Parfi Harmony housing and so, that has created some pressures on the drainage. But we have floods there and a couple weeks ago, Lionel Wordsworth and a team had consultation with the people in Canal Polder and because we are building a similar relief structure as we have built at, as we are now building at Joanna at Canal Number 2 to help empty water into the Demerara River. You talk about the, the, the sluice and so on costing over $200 million of work that is going on in Black Bush Polder. 261. But you, 261, right? Yeah. But that's, even all of that will not be enough. With all the pumps, I think, Lionel, what, 29 pumps that NBI.